In today's video, we're going to be learning how to install and manage VST plugins in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now I see a lot of people having problems with installing and managing VST plugins in Cakewalk by BandLab. For a lot of people, they install the plugins on their system, but once they get into Cakewalk, they can't seem to find them anywhere. If that sounds like you, then please stick around for the whole of this video, because I'll not only be helping you to troubleshoot those kinds of problems, but I'll be hoping to give you a full understanding of how VSTs are installed so that you can avoid these kinds of problems in the future. Now before we get stuck into that, if you do like this kind of content all about home recording, plug-in reviews, gear reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos. Now let's get stuck into installing some VST plugins. So before we go ahead and install our VST plugins for use in Cakewalk, it's worth having a little bit of understanding about the different types of VSTs available because this affects where we install them and how we manage them in Cakewalk. Now the VST format was created by Steinberg who are better known for their DAWQ base and comes in three basic different types. Those are VST instruments, VST effects and VST MIDI effects. Now VST instruments actually generate sound in some way or other and are best known for their virtual instruments such as virtual drums, virtual bass, virtual piano, that kind of thing. VST effects are primarily used to change the audio in some way within our DAW and are best known for compressors, EQs, reverb, delay, chorus, that kind of thing. VST MIDI effects are used to manipulate the MIDI within our DAW. Now as well as this, they'll come in 32-bit and 64-bit versions and you'll need to choose depending on your operating system. As well as this, there are different versions. Most commonly we see VST2s and VST3s and this can also affect where our VSTs get installed on the system. So with all of that knowledge in our head, let's go ahead and install a VST plugin. So in order to troubleshoot problems you may have been having with VST plugins in Cakewalk, I'm first of all going to run through a fairly typical process of installing a plugin and we'll see how it gets picked up by Cakewalk. Later on I'll be talking through some specific troubleshooting sort of techniques to find out what may have gone wrong if you can't see the plugin in Cakewalk. But let's start off with a standard installation. I've got a plugin here called Denise Bad Tape. I've got its installation file on my desktop here. I'll double click on it and that's going to open up the window for installing the plugin. Now I'm actually going to open up a blank notepad here as well and I'll be taking some notes along the way of some important file paths as we go along. So I'll zoom in so you guys can see a little bit more clearly and I'll accept the agreement, click on next. Now it started off by giving me a file path, but this is not actually the location of where the VSTs will be installed. This is just a file path for its other files associated with the VSTs. So I'll right click on it and copy it, paste it into my document just in case I need it for some troubleshooting later, although it's fairly unlikely. And I'll go ahead and click next. Now it's giving me a file path here and it's telling me this is where it's going to install the 32-bit version of the plugin. Now this file path, which I'm going to copy and paste here into my notepad, is a very, very typical uh, file path for 32-bit plugins. You'll often see plugins get installed by default to this location. Now I'll give a list of standard locations in the description down below because that can be quite helpful as well when you come to troubleshoot later if you're finding that your plugins aren't getting picked up. So we'll take a note of that. Now I should note also that you could change this to a custom file path, but we're not going to do that right now. I'll cover that a little bit later on in the video. That's if you want to create a custom place for your VST plugins to go. So I'll click on next. And again, it's giving me another file location here. This time it's telling me where it's going to install the 64-bit version of the VST plugin. So I'll copy that and I'll paste it into my notepad. And again, this is a very, very typical file location for this type of file. I'll go ahead and click Next. 
Now it's given me the option of either installing the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version. Lots of installers will do this. I don't need the 32-bit version, so I'm just going to uncheck that. But if you're working on a 32-bit operating system, it may be worth you installing that version. I'm not going to install either the AAX version of the plugin here. That's not a VST and it's not going to be used by Cakewalk. Now you could install either both the VST2 version or, and the VST3 version, or you could select either or. Now sometimes what I like to do is just install one of them, and if I have problems with that particular version, then I'll try out the other version. So I'll, I'll deselect the VST3 version at the moment, and I'll just install the VST2 version. So I'll go ahead and click Next. That's going to give me a little bit of information about the installation, and I'll go ahead and install that plugin. So it should be now installed. So I'll zoom back out. I'll click on finish there. I'll keep my notepad open just in case I need it and I'll go ahead and start Cakewalk. So I'll click on its icon. Now as Cakewalk starts up it actually uh, does a plugin scan so it looks for any new plugins. That's in the bottom right hand corner and you can see here it's found one new plugin. That's great. That's really good news. It looks like I'm going to be able to go ahead and use that plugin. So I'll just double check by clicking on a new project an empty window. And if you look at the list of plugins over here on the right hand side, you can see there is a folder there called Denise. And if I open that folder, it says Denise Bad Tape. Now I could then go ahead if I created an audio track, which I'll do now, and drag that Denise Bad Tape over there and use it as a plugin on that audio channel. And you can see it's popped up and it seems to be working fine there. Now, the reason that went ahead so easily is because I did use some standard file paths, which I know Cakewalk is already looking for when it does a scan for new plugins. But I'm now going to go ahead uninstall this and put it in a custom file path so you can see how we can use the plugin manager to look into new folders and find plugins in different locations. So there are a couple of common reasons why plugins can't be seen once you've installed them in Cakewalk. One is to do with file locations and the other is to do with plugins being disabled. We'll deal with file locations first and then enabling plugins later. So again, I've uninstalled the plugin we installed before and I'm going to reinstall it now. So that's the Denise Bad Tape plugin. So I'll go ahead and double click its installer and I'll also open up Notepad here again. Just drag it down there so you can see it and I'll Zoom in so you can see what's going on. I'll accept the agreement, click on next. I'm not bothered about this file location. These are just files, uh, which other files which are installed, not the actual VST plugins. So I'll click on next and I won't bother copying that. It's also telling me here where it's going to install the 32-bit VSTs, but I'm not bothered about that because I'm not actually going to install the 32-bit VSTs. So I'll flick over that and go to next. Now this I am interested in because I am going to install the 64-bit version of the VST2 plugins. And I'm actually going to change this to my own specific custom location. So I'll click on browse here and I'm actually going to go to, let's see, I'll go to the D drive here. And I'm going to select this folder here, which is called My VSTs. Click on OK. And I'm actually going to copy that and paste it into my notepad over there, just so I'll know about it later. And I'll click on Next. And I'm going to deselect the 32-bit plugins because, as I say, I don't want those. And I'm also not going to install the AAX and the VST3 plugins. I'm just going to install this VST2 version of the plugins. And that should install in my custom folder location there. So I'll click on Next. And I'll click on install and that will go ahead and it'll install that plugin. Now I'll go ahead and I'll start up uh, Cakewalk and it'll do another plugin scan. So let's see what it does in the bottom corner there. Wait a moment, there it goes, it's doing a scan. And oh, it hasn't found any new plugins. So this would be a problem for us. And that's because we didn't tell Cakewalk to look in that new folder which we've created. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So we'll go up to Utilities and click on Cakewalk Plugin Manager. And the Plugin Manager will pop 
up and I'll just zoom into that so you guys can see it. We'll give it a moment as it quickly looks through to see what plugins it's got installed. And it has quite a lot of categories here on the left hand side for different types of plugins. We're only interested in the VST types of plugins. So that's the VST audio effects, the VST3 audio effects, the VST instruments and the VST3 instruments. Now, as I say, it hasn't found our plugin because we haven't told it which folder to look in. To tell it that, we'll have to go down to the bottom here in the middle under VST configuration and click on options. And then we can actually supply it with a new path to look at. So I'm going to click on add. I'm going to navigate to that new folder which I created called My VSTs. Click on OK and click on OK again. And I'll just uncheck Rescan Existing Plugins. Click on OK. I'll close that and I'm actually just going to completely restart Cakewalk now. So I'll shut it down and then I'll open Cakewalk again. And of course, it's going to go ahead and it's going to do its plugin scan again. So let's see what comes up there. It goes through. And hey presto, it's found one new plugin there. That looks like it's found our new plugin which we've installed. So I'll create a new project here. Uh, I'll create an empty project. And if we look over at the plugins on the right hand side, under the folder called Denise, if we open that up, we've got Denise Bad Tape. And it's found that in our new location. So we could just go ahead, create an audio track, and we could actually use that plugin in that audio track. And as you can see, it's come up a okay. Now there are other times when the plugin doesn't appear, and that's because it's disabled. So let's take a look at that next. So here's another common scenario. I've installed my plugin and I'm pretty sure I've set up the paths correctly. But if I look over at my plugins, I just can't see my Denise bad tape plugin at all there. So I'm just going to go to the plugin manager again and check a couple of things. So I'll go up to the top, utilities, Cakewalk plugin manager. I'll click on that and I'll just zoom into that for you guys so you can see what we're doing. So I just want to double check first of all that that path has been added. So I'll go down here to VST configuration options and then I'll look at the list of paths. And indeed, I can see that it's definitely looking in the folder where I installed the plugin. So that is not the problem at the moment. So the next thing I always check is that the, the plugin is enabled and not excluded. Now to do that, I'll go to the particular type of plugin it is. It's an audio effect plugin. It's a VST2. So I'll look here in this category and that gives me a list of the currently installed and enabled plugins. You can see down here that there's a filter to show enabled or show excluded and currently we're showing enabled. What I want to do is see if it's been excluded. So I'll click on show excluded, click on that and you can see that indeed my plugin has been excluded. Now, there's a number of reasons why plugins can get excluded, and it can be because Cakewalk has detected that they're faulty in some way. So if you do enable them, I uh, urge you to proceed with caution, make sure you've saved all your work, etc., because it could lead to a crash. So I'm going to select the Denise Bad Tape plugin here, and I'm going to click Show, uh, I'm going to click Enable Plugin just above there on that button, and that has enabled that plugin, and you can see it's gone from the list. If I go to Show, show enabled and look down through the list doo -doo -doo, somewhere up a bit you can see it there so it's now enabled and in fact I can close the plugin manager I'll go out to full screen and if we look over at the list of plugins on the right hand side you can see that it's actually already there. I don't even have to restart Cakewalk at all to start using it. So I've got an audio track open there and I can just go ahead and I can drag that plugin onto that audio track and you can see it seems to be working a-okay. So I really hope that you found this video useful and you can now just get on with making some music. If you're still stuck, then please do ask in the comments down below and I'll try my very best to help you out. If you like this video, then please do help me out by hitting the like button. Also consider sharing it with anyone else who you think is having a similar problem. If you didn't like this video, then hit the dislike button twice. If you like this kind of content all about home recording, DAWs, plugin reviews, gear reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. And I'll see you in the next video.